Hey, that's me, Zip. I've been playing RuneScape for years. Bossing, skilling, you name it. But after all this time, I have no pets. Last time on Zip No Pet. Get a pet and you win my reward. What do I have to do? You've been sentenced to the mines for 10 hours straight. No! Oh God, how could they do this to me? 10 hours of mining? I've tried the ladder, but every time I just get teleported right back down. Oh Lord. There must be some reason, something I'm supposed to learn here. I guess I have no choice. Let's get started with the 10 hours. When it comes to mining in RuneScape, there's basically two methods. Number one, click rock. Number two, click something else, click rock fast. The problem with getting the mining pet, the rock golem, is if you're not doing number two, it's gonna take forever. Essentially, the only way to actually get the pet is to successfully mine a rock. So option two can be up to three times faster by being really try hard and click intensive. So that's why I chose option one first. I'll skip over most of the boring parts, but I did get a couple clue geodes. Three hours later. Okay, we've been here for three hours and this is just not gonna cut it. It's less than 400 gems mined per hour, the XP is terrible, the rate of getting the pet is awful. We're gonna have to try option two. Okay, as you might be able to tell from the inventory, I am going to attempt to three tick mine for a little bit, probably for about an hour. I think if everything goes right, this should be three or four times as good as what I was doing, so I'll give it a shot. All right, before we get started, let's get a quick explanation of this. Now, keep in mind, I'm by no means an expert. There are some really good videos out there to actually teach you how to do this. Very quickly, here's how it works. In RuneScape, the smallest interval of time where some action can happen is called a tick, and this is 0.6 seconds long. Some actions are one tick, some actions are two, three, four, five, etc. When you click a rock, you have a chance to get an ore from it. After you get an ore from a rock, the rock depletes or turns gray for a short period of time. When this happens, you have to continue on to the next rock to continue mining. As you switch between rocks and click on the next one, it's always going to take you at least 5 game ticks to get an ore out of the rock, which is about 3 seconds. However, if you start a different action and click on the next rock in the same tick, you'll be able to start mining a little bit early. The game will replace the 5 tick action of moving and mining with the 3 tick action of making a paste. Basically, what you'll see is in my inventory I'm going to click on two items to try and make a product and then click on a rock at the same tick. In doing so, I should be able to receive a gem slightly faster. And if you really get the pace down of this, it can be up to three times as fast as regular mining. Okay, that was the first inventory. I think I understand what to do. It's just very easy to misclick this, I feel like. And I probably did about half of those correctly in the last inventory. Hey, there is our first level, level 80 mining. Okay, that inventory puts us at five hours total of gem mining. And I think that was the first hour that we actually did it correctly. We started a little bit before I reset the counter here, but that was uh, way better. Looks like you're getting used to this. You know, it's not that bad after all. Well, don't get too accustomed. Not again. At this point, I found myself at the volcanic mine. This is another mining activity I've never done before, where the goal of the minigame is to mine the large boulder all the way down to a small boulder and send it down into this volcano. The minigame is a bit more complicated, stabilizing the volcano for as long as you can, but that's the general idea of it. And every time you get a fragment out of the boulder, you have a chance at getting the rock golem pet. At the end of the game, you turn in your fragments for reward points in the shop, where you can redeem them for ores or other things related to the minigame. 
Despite my initial thoughts, I actually had a lot of fun playing this minigame. I even got a level without even thinking about it. Unfortunately, I did a lot of this on stream, and I recorded it wrong so there is music in the background so I can't replay the clips. But during a duel with Imperator, by the way, I did get trolled into thinking I got a rock golem. After my 5 hours at the volcanic mine, I had enough points to get some rewards from it, and on screen now is going to be the total loot from 10 hours of mining, half of gem rocks, and half of the volcanic mine. Overall, I thought this was going to be a pretty tough challenge, but it ended up being not too bad. I didn't mind it too much. Alright, you completed my challenge, and for that, I'll give you some freedom. You can do whatever you want next. I can do Slayer? Of course, but... But... You're not allowed to skip any task that could give you a pet. Oh. Okay, that's not bad. <laughs> well, I'll start doing some Slayer. My first task was Iron Dragons. That was a pretty quick one, no worries. Then we moved on to Sukwas, another easy task, really quick with the cannon. After that, I had a long Aberrant Spectres task, but it wasn't too bad. Next up was Steel Dragons, another pretty quick task for me. Overall, we've been getting pretty lucky with some pretty easy tasks. And it all came crumbling down. Next, we were assigned Cow Fights. Now, there is a Cow Fight boss called the Cow Fight Queen, and this boss does have a pet, the Cow Fight Princess. The Calfight Queen is one of RuneScape's oldest bosses. This thing came out in 2004. KQ drops the Dragon Chain Body, which used to be one of the cloudiest things you could wear in RuneScape. Gear has changed a lot since 2004, so it's not quite what it used to be, but this is still a very iconic RuneScape boss. Now onto the actual fight. The Calfight Queen has two forms, a green one and a red one. Both forms can attack you with melee, magic, or range, the three styles of attacks in RuneScape. To survive more of the hits, I pray magic so I don't get hit by the magic attacks, and stand close so it'll melee attack me more often. The first phase also prays against magic and range attacks so you can only attack it with a melee weapon. So the plan is to run in, hit the cow fight queen a few times with a hammer, and then stab it with the special weapon called the Karis Partisan. This weapon does extra damage against this type of monster, cow fights. Once you get the cow fight queen's health bar to zero in the first phase, it cracks open and out comes the red phase of the Calphite Queen. This phase is immune to melee damage, so now I have to switch to range gear. At this point, it's more of a DPS check. Can you kill the boss before it kills you? We really want to get the KQ head, which is 1 in 128, before the task is over, because it'll help speed up the kills. Aside from that, I have already received one Dragon Chain body, but it'll be cool to get another one. She also drops a Dragon Two-Hander Sword, which is another unique drop to the Calphite Queen, as well as two more rare drops, the Jar of Sand and the Calphite Princess, the pet. But both of those are super rare, at 1 in 2,000 and 1 in 3,000 respectively. And that's all you need to know about the Calphite Queen for now. Let's get into some kills. On kill number 25, we got a combat achievement for killing 25 Calphite Queen. There's one more of these at 50, but otherwise, every other pop-up should be some kind of unique item. There are a couple other notable drops here that are worth a little bit of money, like magic seeds. This whole time I had been really close to the next magic level, 93 magic, and after kill number 55, I teleported home, and there we go. Whoa, dragon two hand sword, collection log slot, I'll take that, let's go. More magic seeds, nice. I don't know why, I'm getting a really good feeling about these kills right now. You know, I feel like we're about to get something. Oh. Oh, let's go. We got the KQ head, 124 just before the drop. That is a, such a... Wow. I am happy to see that. It's not going to matter too much. We only have 10 kills left. But next time we have to come back here, these trips will be way shorter. I'm not going to do it right now since there's only 12 or 10 left, like I said. But, oh man, that's awesome. I'm so glad we hit that before the drop rate. Alrighty, this is the last kill of the task here. And honestly, KQ, not terrible. Glad we got the head. But yeah, we did 118, we have 133 total, and we made 5.64 mil over the course of basically all of those kills. Four elite clues as well, which is pretty cool. 
We've got a couple clues to open before the end of the episode here. But let's start with opening up the medium clue. And nothing good, 7,000. Then we've got two hard clues. And we have a master in here, okay. Okay, here we go, let's open the rest of these clues. See if we get another master, maybe. Hey, that's a collection log slot, ancient page three. That's actually pretty exciting because I think I only need one more for the shared rewards. Yeah, 48 out of 49, I'm only missing Bandos page two. All right, next the five elites. Nothing great. Yikes. Okay. Magic seed, some purple sweets, sure. Oh, Dark Infinity color kit. Nice. Another collection log. Not worth that much, but still just like a cool thing to get. Our master clue. Ah, nothing crazy. That was a fun little opening, though. Perfect. Glad I found you here. Let me guess. Another challenge. Exactly. This time, you start from zero. 